now let's illustrate what we've done with uh, uh, with the um, thermal problem. Uh, use the same procedure to uh, um, solve or create the element uh, and uh, global matrices uh, of the uh, of an uh, a bar uh, problem. Here we have uh, the differential equation that describes the bar. It's uh, modulus of resistivity times cross-sectional area times the second derivative of the displacement. In here, u of x is the displacement, uh, plus f of x, where f is a distributed load, a load that just pulls the, uh, uh, the bar in a direction. And our uh, boundary conditions are that it's fixed on this side and uh, it ha it's free on this side, so it can move freely uh, from uh, on the right hand side. Let's divide it into n number of elements. The length of each element will be, of course, the total length over n. Uh, then derive the element equation from the differential equation for constant properties uh, and externally applied force. Uh, here you are. This is the same that we got with the um, the uh, thermal problem or the previous illustration. Uh, if we perform the integrals, we are going to get uh, sorry. We are going to get uh, the a, a, a matrix. As you can notice, it's similar to the first matrix that we got uh, uh, in the previous example. Uh, but the constant is different here. Instead of a, uh, small a, we are having the modulus of resistivity times the cross-section uh, area. Uh, this uh, is the element equation for a bar problem, as illustrated here. We are going to use this uh, for a two-element uh, bar. Uh, here you have, again, uh, the displacements should be equal uh, at the middle. So when you assemble the matrix, uh, when you assemble the total matrix, you're going to get uh, a three by three global stiffness matrix that has the uh, excitation term that is coming because of uh, we uh, because we added those uh, the the F distributed, and here the uh, the uh, boundary. Uh, uh, vector q1, q2, q3 uh, will appear to us as just r, where r is the reaction at uh, at the, the the fixed side, but there are no other terms here that we can use, so uh, we just substituted by uh, zeros. Uh, if we want to solve uh, this uh, equation, uh, unfortunately, you will find that uh, this matrix is uh, a singular matrix. You cannot invert it. If you find, if you try to get the inverse of this matrix, it will, uh, it does not exist. The determinant is zero. Uh, this is simply because we haven't yet applied the boundary conditions. So applying the boundary conditions, remember that we uh, have defined the displacement at uh, the first node to be equal to zero. So just substitute it here now this uh, equation uh, uh, sorry this column is all multiplied by zero one times zero minus one times zero and zero times zero so it's 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 kind of uh, irrelevant anymore right I have defined the value of u at that point to be zero uh, notice also uh, that if it's not zero but another known value we can just use it here and then transform it to the right hand side you, you don't have to uh, do this now just assume that uh, the known value of the function is zero here uh, and we are left up with this part of the matrix multiplied by uh, that's going to be multiplied by other values so if we just now pick the first equation the first equation is minus one times u2, 0 times u3 equals 1 times m f h over 2 uh, plus r. This equation uh, is an equation that we are going to use later. 
so uh, just separate the first equation from the other two equations. If you just separate them, you'll end up with a two by two matrix. See, this is the two by two matrix, which represents two equations in two unknowns, U2 and U3. Even if you don't separate this, just explode this system of equations, you'll get, you'll get uh, three uh, equations in three unknown variables, U2, U3, and R. Uh, however, the 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 system the 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 what the later two equations are solvable independently uh, so if you just solve them you will get values for u2 and u3 that you can substitute back into r uh, sorry into the first equation and get r uh, let's just focus now uh, on the uh, simple procedure it's that we remove the first column, it's multiplied all by zeros, uh, and then remove the first row as well, or the first equation, and handle it separately later. We end up with a, a, a system of equations that can be solved for U2 and U3. Uh, if you uh, solve this, you'll end up with U2 and U3 equals fh squared over 2ea times 3 uh, and 4. Uh, this is a straightforward linear algebra problem, so I'm going to, I'm not going to uh, present the details. Uh, just invert uh, this matrix and multiply it by uh, the right hand side. Now, what we know, what we got here is uh, the value of u2 and u3. Well, remember <coughs> that U2 and U3 were the unknowns. U1 was predetermined, right? The boundary condition said that at the point one, displacement is known, it's equal to zero. So now I ended up with knowing U1 as an input, and after solving the equations, now I know U2 and U3, and these are the values of the function at the nodes uh, of the finite element model. Uh, so, what are we left with? We are left with knowing the reaction term. Now, I, I, I remember, I set aside the first equation. Uh, so, let's go back to uh, calculate what's known in uh, finite element jargon as the secondary variable. Here, the secondary variable is the reaction force at the support of the bar. Uh, just use the first equation. Everything is known. You know now U1, U2, and U3. Uh, so just substitute directly and solve for uh, the reaction, which will be minus 2F uh, times uh, H. Uh, here notice that H is equal to half the length if we use the same uh, if we use two elements with the same length. So actually this is uh, uh, the distributed force times the length and it has a negative sign because it's going to be in the other direction uh, which is what we get from uh, solving the equilibrium equations in a very simple bar uh, problem in mechanics of material. So uh, what have we done here? Uh, we uh, assembled the equations, we assembled the element equations for the bar we applied the boundary conditions. Uh, the boundary conditions uh, said that we can separate or resulted in a separation of the equations. We could solve a reduced system of uh, equations uh, in the unknown variables, U2 and U3. After that solution, we came back to uh, the other uh, secondary equations or, uh, the, uh, that included the secondary variables. We substituted directly and got all what we needed uh, to know about the uh, bar uh, problem. Now, let's summarize. Uh, the assembled or the global uh, matrix uh, presents everything that happens inside uh, uh, the domain of our interest. Uh, 
uh, because it describes the relation between the elements, it describes the behavior of the function inside the element according to the differential equation, but in a, a linear uh, algebra uh, form uh, that can be actually solved after applying the boundary conditions uh, to obtain the values of the function inside the domain. And finally, we can use those to uh, obtain the secondary variables uh, in our example here, they were the uh, reactions at the support. 